Oh, YouTube, do I have a spicy video today. I can promise you this is gonna ruffle some feathers. So I wanna start this video with a little story about myself. Now, when I was a beginner leather crafter, I would look at my work and just be like, man, I wish I was better. Everybody else is so much better than me. Um, they must have the secret. You know, I don't have the secret yet. What is it, you know, what is it about what I know and what is it about what other people know that makes my work, you know, not up to par? So what I would do, I would ask people on Instagram, I would send DMs, I would try and ask other crafters who I looked up to how to do certain things. And quickly, I found out that nobody wants to give you free education. I asked once and I got an answer. I asked a different person, I didn't get an answer. I asked a third person, I didn't get an answer. I asked a fourth person. And you know what that fourth person said? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> now, I am all for the growth and development and lifting others up, but now I've been doing this as a full-time job for quite a while. I have begun accumulating my own little pool of crafters that ask me questions. When you're in the beginning, you think that there is some secret trick to you not being good. You might even think that you will one day have it all figured out. And that's exactly where you get everything wrong. You will never have it all figured out. When you get to a certain point, you will be proud of your work. You will be happy with your work. You might even exceed your own expectations with your quality. But what you won't ever grow out of is being able to see every single micro flaw that's in your work. What does that have to do with this video? I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> Aside from leaving fake reviews and uh, trying to actually collapse someone's business, you asking people for advice is super, super, super rude. Now, remember, I was one of these people until somebody sat me down and said, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're just asking somebody for their advice. What you're actually doing when you ask those questions is you are now putting the burden of your knowledge and education on somebody else. So let's say I have somebody who asks me, what's your paint technique? What happens is I now go into my inbox where there is a ton of business inquiries, comments, you know, social media followers, whatever, but you stick out like a sore thumb asking for education. Now I have a YouTube channel with tons of videos. You can learn how I do a ton of different stuff. But what you do, <laughs> you put me in a situation where you're asking me where my paint process is. I now have to stop what I'm doing in the middle of my day to either A, stop and sit and tell you my whole paint process or B, not reply and look like a huge asshole. So you you back me into a corner where A, I have to waste, you know, however many minutes to type that message, which you're then gonna most likely reply to and try and start a conversation and take more time asking other people to educate you or I choose to not respond and then what happens is that I look like a super huge asshole and every time my name comes up in a conversation, you go, yeah, I asked that dude for advice and he's an asshole. Now, not only is it super annoying to the people you ask because you put them into a weird corner, even if a person responds and tells you exactly what they do, you are not going to be able to execute it. There's a reason why you are asking somebody else for advice. That's because they sat there and not only learned the knowledge it took to get there, but they also sat and tried over and 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 over again to develop their own skills and their own hand-eye coordination and their own little bits of finesse. You know, this paint process, you know, example I'm giving, white paint, you know, might be more difficult to paint than other things. There's all these different nuances and you as a beginner aren't even gonna be able to understand all the intricacies that go into this kind of stuff. You know, it's super flattering to have people look up to you and want you to teach them your, you know, your techniques. But the problem 
is even if I were to, to respond in a DM, whatever response I'm gonna give you, information is not universal. Like, for example, a question I get a lot of times is, you know, what weight leather do you use? Like what thickness leather do you use for belts? Now I can sit here and say, I use between seven ounce and 12 ounce. That's a huge, A, that's a huge range. And B, there's a range because every situation is different. If I make a work of a heavy duty work belt for a guy my size who works in the oil field, I'm gonna build him a big, tough, badass work belt that's gonna be extra heavy and last the guy. Now, if I make the belt the same thickness or weight for a 16 year old barrel racer girl, the belt is gonna fit terribly. Like she, it's gonna be too thick, it's gonna be too uncomfortable. She's gonna hate wearing it. She probably won't wear it. There's so much little information that goes on. It's like, I like to think about it as if you go and you ask a uh, like a, a fitness coach and you go, uh, what's a healthy food to eat? You know, and they respond broccoli. You know, broccoli's healthy food. You know, does that mean go and have every single meal, nothing but broccoli and all you eat is broccoli? No, that's equally as unhealthy as eating some other stuff. You're gonna miss all these macronutrients, all these other micronutrients. There's so much nuance that goes into it. And that's the tough part because ultimately, when you're a beginner, you think somebody's gonna give you some golden ticket or some silver bullet that's just gonna solve all your problems. But the problem is, is that you're so early in the stages of learning, you don't even understand that there's context to the situation. You know, it's like, if you're so early in your stages, you don't know that you should make a belt for a teenage girl a different thickness than a grown ass man who wants a work belt that's gonna last him forever and he works in some blue collar industry. Like, you're not, you're just not along the journey enough to even really be helped. Like, I know these things sound harsh, it's just the fact of reality. The same way that like, you know, when, when I get messaged, I either have to respond or I look like an asshole. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's the case. I have, I have really three options. I tell you the exact thing that you want to hear, which you're not even gonna understand because if you did understand, you wouldn't even be asking the question in the first place or I don't respond and I become an asshole. Or my third option, which is mostly what I tell people, is to experiment and figure out what they like to do. And that's really the best the best advice there is. Like, you know, let's say I do answer your question of, you know, what is my paint or my coloring process? And I, and I tell you, you know, I use this product, I use this product, and I use this product before I use this other product. That is not going to make your work look like my work. It's just not like, even in my own process, I don't follow a strict exact thing every time. You know, the, the trick isn't like, you know, I put a resist down and then I wait for 30 minutes exactly and then I stain it. No, it's like I put resist down, I let it dry. Sometimes I'll get to it in 30 minutes. Maybe I'm juggling a different project and I won't touch it till tomorrow. The deal is everybody has their own formula. You could have 10 crafters do the exact same thing and come up with 10 different outcomes. You might have a couple outcomes that are very, very similar, and you can see like maybe this is kind of the general consensus, but there's no secret answer. There's no secret answer, and the longer you spend sitting there thinking that there's a secret answer or a, a, a secret piece of information out there that you don't have, the longer you're not going to improve. The key is going on your own educational journey, whether that be watching YouTube videos, reading books, uh, sitting there and actually testing different things out and seeing which option you like the best. You're never gonna learn some magic bullet thing. And that's my exact point is like, if you go and ask me what, you know, how thick is that leather that I'm using, you, you already don't understand that there's a context and that no answer is right. Now it's hard because most crafters aren't gonna go out there and say, you know, what I'm saying right now for 
probably for good reason because I can only imagine what my comment section looks like right now. But the punchline of it is, is like, somebody can give you the play-by-play -play book, but if you execute every play wrong, then what good does the playbook do for you? It The playbook is useless if you can't execute any of the plays correctly. So you need to write your own playbook so you know how to run the plays correctly and you build that playbook up and you add new pages to the playbook. And the next thing you know, you got a three ring binder with freaking 500 page playbook and you go, oh, I understand all of this crap. Because at the baseline, if you don't understand it, you have no chance at really succeeding. I use this analogy all the time. When you buy a desk from Ikea and you follow the instructions perfectly to a T and assemble the desk, does that mean that you know how to make a desk and construct the desk and sit there and, and run the saw that cuts all the pieces and, and do the finishing work with the stains and the oils on the wood? Following instructions or having step-by-step -step things to follow does not make you a better craftsman. In fact, you actually might learn less because now if you assemble an Ikea desk on the step-by-step -step instructions and you go to make your own, you're gonna have this false expectation of desk building being easy. Ikea makes it super easy when you follow step-by-step -step instructions and you go, okay, now it's my turn to start and build my own desk. This is super easy. I assembled an Ikea desk in 45 minutes. Little do you know, it's gonna take you three hours to sit there and draft up the construction of the desk in the first place. So you're much better off practicing and learning and not asking people for the secret because there is no secret. Now, I understand why people ask because they are trying to improve themselves. I get that. But the problem that most beginners don't want to admit to themselves or the world is that they're not asking on how to do something. They're usually asking for the magic bullet that's gonna fix their their problem. And I talk to crafters all the time, people who are like full timers now who live, you know, leather crafting, they say the same thing. When I used to ask, I used to ask, you know, what paint do you use? Because I thought finding out the paint was gonna teach me how to be good at painting. Most people, when they ask about something, they are asking for some magic bullet, like using the paint example. Sometimes you might have people who use the same two colors, but one person knows how to balance the contrast between color A and color B a lot better than, than somebody else. And that's what makes their work look so nice is because they have the experience of making that balance. They know one color to make more vivid. They know what color to make more soft. They know what color to use more on this side, what color to use more on that side. There's a whole page in the playbook of how to like paint well and asking what paint do you use is like part, is like, is like not even part of the playbook. It's like a thing on the top, you know, it's like, it's like what supplies are needed. You know what I mean? It's not even like step one of the process. It's like a prerequisite, like come with these paints and then follow these instructions. That's how it goes. So I've dealt with enough people asking for advice. When you ask, you know, what is your paint process? You know, that is a super vague open-ended question. You think I'm gonna give you the magic bullet, you know? And I also deal with people who go, hey man, here's a photo of my work. Um, I used X, Y, and Z product. Um, I waited this long and for some reason it turned out super crazy. How did this happen? That is how you ask for advice. You know, I know what paint you used. I know what you did, how you did it. And I can go, oh, your problem was that you didn't, you know, do X, Y, and Z. And I can give you actual advice on how to improve a mistake that you may have made and you can kind of smooth out your own, you know, orders of operation. But that's drastically different than going, hey, what is your staining process? Like, I just want to reinstate that I understand why people ask for advice. They are trying to learn and they are trying to get better themselves. But you have to understand that it is nobody's responsibility 
to make you better at doing leather work. Now, you know, I don't know, maybe you're just like a hobby person. Maybe you just picked up leather the first time and you have no clue about anything. I know you might want to ask me, but at the same time, shouldn't you go on YouTube and watch a video or two rather than like pull a guy away from his business to like teach you something that you're gonna do as a hobby once or twice and never touch again. Or you know, you might be a person who's, who's actually trying to make a job out of this. How crazy is it if, you, if you're a leather crafter who's making money and you are trying to make a career or a side hustle out of it, how crazy is it to ask competition what their formula is. Like imagine you're trying to open up a mom and pop burger stand and you're over going to fucking Burger King and asking for their seasoning recipe. It doesn't make any sense. And even then, if you ask the if you ask Burger King for their seasoning recipe, you don't know what kind of buns they use. You don't know how much seasoning to even put in the burger. You don't know how to how long to cook the burger. Like and if you're so in the beginning stages that you don't understand those concepts, you're not even ready to receive information or advice. So this is officially probably going to be the most hated leather crafting video on YouTube, which I have accepted. Um, you can leave your hate comments down below if you would like. But if you've made it this far, I hope you really understand the message that I'm trying to actually give across. Um, you know, my message isn't, you know, you're stupid and you're a beginner and you suck. You know, my message is only through trial and error and learning with your own two hands and learning your own techniques, are you truly going to master your craft? You know, without, without knowing the perfect burger seasoning formula and how long to cook it and how much to put in there and and what bread it goes with and all this, that, and the other, you're not gonna have that secret formula until you craft your own secret formula. You know, it that playbook thing is perfect. Like, the only way to become a, a Super Bowl winning team is to have your own playbook that you've written yourself. So I highly encourage people to write their own playbook and watch an infinite amount of YouTube videos and try a thousand times and fail a thousand times and learn and take notes and and strive to make each piece better than the last piece. I deep down am an artist and a craftsman. It's who I am. I love the game of craftsmanship and improving and and all that stuff. I am super passionate about it. But as a person who has now dedicated his entire adult life to this process, let me be the first to tell you that nobody is going to give you the secret formula. There is no secret formula. You have to come up with your own formula and, and make it so good that one day your inbox is full of people asking what your secret formula is. Keep on crafting. If you want advice, send your work, ask specific questions on why X happened and how you want to improve this specific thing. And you will have a lot better luck getting a response that is actual tangible advice that you can take home. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. If you wanna learn something, I got a YouTube channel full of shit to learn. Until next time, it's been Brian Sosak, <laughs> the most polarizing leather craftsman on YouTube. <laughs>